Okay. Good afternoon. We're here today um, to give you an update as we get the latest data and information from the National Weather Service about Hurricane Milton. In the midst of what is to pass today, the 9th, a state of emergency has been issued for all of Chatham County. This morning beginning at 8 a.m. This allows us to work across governmental lines and to support each other as we align things for uh, the onslaught of whatever we will receive from Hurricane Milton. Uh, aligned with the governor's state of emergency that was done on yesterday, on Tuesday, uh, it activated the um, Chatham County Emergency Operations Plan and it gave us the way that we were going to go about. We have been on command policy group uh, meetings this morning as we get updates. And um, one of the things I want to say just before I turn it over to Director Jones is uh, when I was coming up and in my high school days, college days, we used to do a dance called a wobble, all right? That's what we're doing with this storm. We are watching the wobble, okay, because it's wobbling, all right? It's not going in a direct line, but it wobbled, and, and uh, late on yesterday, it kind of wobbled south, and so it moved south of Tampa, but that does not take us out of the woods. And so at this time, I'm going to call Director Jones, and he's going to give you the latest information we have from the National Weather Service. Director Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the Chairman mentioned, we're watching those wobbles, those slight adjustments in the forecast track. Uh, we've seen those over the history of this, uh, of the, over the lifespan of this storm so far, and it is very common with any storm to have those slight adjustments in that forecast track versus what they actually see from any given forecast. So uh, we, uh, we are watching that. We're watching that with every advisory that comes out. We're making adjustments internally as to our operational tempo, our operational status, and uh, so that's why you see things constantly change because um, we're constantly reacting to the latest and greatest information. It's very, very fluid for us. Um, so uh, we react and we respond appropriately based on the conditions that are presented to us with each advisory. So as of right now, uh, we do remain in operating condition three, which is OPCON three, which is our readiness phase. So we are ready for this storm. Uh, so as it approaches Florida, we'll continue again watching those advisories. If we need to advance to another operating condition, then we'll do so. It is expected to make landfall um, either late tonight, early tomorrow. Um, it is weakening as it gets closer to uh, the coast of Florida. However, the wind field or the wind rings are actually expanding. So as it gets closer to Florida, it's growing in size. And that's why you see the forecast track is so far south of us but we're still in a tropical storm warning because those wind fields are expected to grow exponentially. So we're gonna watch those throughout uh, the afternoon, throughout the night, and make sure that all of our public safety and our public works crews are ready to respond to that. So we are under a tropical storm warning. We are still under a tropical storm, I'm sorry, a storm surge watch. The National Weather Service is evaluating that, that storm surge watch to see if it needs to be upgraded to a storm surge warning. Uh, we should have information on that hopefully by the end of the day, first part of the morning. So winds, what we can expect, uh, sustained winds of 20 to 30 miles an hour inland, uh, that's Savannah and everything west of Savannah. Uh, they, we could see gusts of 35 to 45 miles an hour inland. On the coast, which is everything from Savannah east, really the Truman east, we could see sustained winds of 30 to 40, 40 miles an hour with gusts from 40 to 50 miles an hour. As I mentioned, there's a uh, storm surge watch, could be upgraded to a storm surge warning, and we're looking at some uh, coastal flooding that is associated with this storm. Most likely it will occur uh, throughout the day on Thursday. It could potentially occur Friday as well. We are looking at a high tide uh, tomorrow morning around two o'clock, uh, or tomorrow afternoon around 2 p.m., and that'll be roughly about a 10.0 uh, foot tide, which could cause significant uh, flooding, coastal flooding, and it could create isolation, uh, isolation issues going out to Tybee. That road could become impassable, and also the causeway going out to Burnside. That could become impassable as well. Additionally, the debris left over from Helene going out to Tybee, there's a lot of marsh rack that's alongside of the road. As the tide starts coming in, it could push that marsh rack even closer to the road. It could push it into the road. So public safety will have to keep evaluating 
that road uh, going out to Tybee, especially for the marsh rack, if there's any dangerous conditions that they are witnessing public safety that will then close the road at that particular time. Georgia Department of Transportation is also ready to react to that as well. They were out today uh, trying to move that marsh rack further away from the road and uh, they, also, they are also pre-positioning resources here so that if the marsh rack does encroach into the roadway then they can respond quickly to kind of push it back uh, to the, uh, the right-of-way. So tonight uh, I do encourage, this afternoon and tonight I do encourage um, all of our business owners, all of our residents to just look around your yard. Anything that could be easily blown around, anything that could be picked up and moved to another location due to high winds, we want to encourage you to go ahead and do that. We understand there's still quite a bit of debris, uh, not only on the side of the roads, but also in people's uh, property that hasn't been cleaned up yet. Um, if there's any way you can secure that, I don't know that you can, but if there's any way that you can secure that, you may want to do that. Um, otherwise, we'll just have to, to make sure that we're monitoring those conditions and reacting to the debris that gets blown around uh, that was left over from Helene. Um, any small yard items, if you have any Halloween decorations out, I encourage you to go ahead and take those down, store those in your garage. Uh, so just be prudent about uh, a high wind event and look around your property and see what you may need to secure from that. <clears throat> All right, so that's all of that that I have right now. We do have uh, some uh, uh, we do have some partners with us today who want to come up and say a few things. We have the City of Savannah, um, Tybee Island, Chatham Area Transit, and the Coastal Health District would like to say a few words, and we'll take those in that order. So, City of Savannah. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Dennis, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your leadership and to all of our uh, partners here. Um, and uh, our school board. We're, we're in this together. Um, this is a scary storm, and I realize how frustrating uh, this must be for our residents. We just did this, uh, and now we're back in this again. But then we look at our friends in Florida. Uh, many of them are in Savannah. You can see a lot of Florida license plates, and I've interacted with many of them and they don't know if they have a home to go back to. And then all of a sudden you're grateful for just things as they are. And so I just ask that we continue to take deep breaths, to be very, very patient. Um, this is not an exact science. And I will tell you that not only our national partners, our state partners, and certainly our local partners are doing the best they can with the information that they have. And as uh, the chairman said, um, the wobble is a song that moves around, and this storm continues to move around. Uh, anticipation of this, and regardless of what we do in terms of our operations tomorrow, uh, the Savannah City Council meeting um, has been pushed back to Friday. Um, we recognize that government still has to uh, go on, and we want to make sure people have proper notice, so we'll hold our workshop at 10 o'clock on Friday. Um, and then have our regular meeting at 10.30 a.m. And, of course, the meeting is at the Board of Education's Whitney Administrative uh, Complex. We urge all residents to do your best, again, to prepare for possible impacts. We know that this might be largely a wind event, um, but then you're talking about a wind event in a place that's already been impacted by wind and rain. And so we know that branches that might have held up under regular circumstances um, might be easier to fall now. So um, make sure you're looking around, making sure, as Dennis said, tie down what needs to be tied down. Um, I declared a state of emergency yesterday that allows our folks to move into an emergency response posture, uh, and we want our folks to prepare the best they can for power outages, uh, replenish emergency kits, and secure your property. Uh, 311 is still the number to call. And so we want you to call to report down trees. That helps us to respond quickly. Uh, it helps our emergency services to do what they need to do. You can also download the 311 app, the Savannah 311, to submit service requests. Um, any down power lines, please uh, call 911. And if you encounter a down power line, uh, keep your distance and contact 911. You can also contact Georgia Power at 188-891. 0938. Uh, city crews are out there uh, in these streets and they'll be out there 
uh, until the storm passes and the next day and then the next day and the next day. Uh, we'll be providing more information to the public this evening um, regarding any possible closures of government operations. Uh, you can find updates from the city at savannahga.gov forward slash Storm Milton. Storm Milton. And you can follow us on social media um, as well. Uh, throughout the last few storms, we've noticed that we've seen an influx of misinformation on social media. And I urge everyone to get information directly uh, from the source. Everybody becomes amateur meteorologists and emergency managers, um, and Facebook has allowed them, and social media has allowed them to do that. The reality is this man behind me uh, and those trusted sources, FEMA, uh, NOAA, um, the National Hurricane Center, GEMA, are the best sources to get that information. You can go to the National Hurricane Center's website. You can go to the Chatham Emergency Management uh, Agency's website. Uh, and everything that I get that I push out, I'm not good at this. I just copy the stuff they give me. Um, I want to thank these dedicated civil servants, uh, not only of Savannah, Chatham County, but all of our municipalities uh, that are working around the clock to make sure that we are safe and provide you uh, the best and most up-to-date information. Uh, again, go to the source. Make sure you have the right information. Again, thank you all very much. We have sandbags available uh, starting at noon today through 5 o'clock at the End Market Arena. Uh, if you need them, go ahead and take them. Please bring your own shovel, and please be prepared to bag them as well. Thank you. Uh, Jay, if you have the operational updates. Nice. Thank you. Tavia. Uh, hello, I'm Brian West with the City of Tavia Allen. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Chairman Ellis and Director Jones for once again, coordinating our efforts in preparation for this storm. Um, as always, our primary uh, goal here is to protect uh, our citizens and our visitors on, on Tabby. Um, in addition to Director uh, Jones's comments on Highway 80 and clearing uh, of that, of that roadway, um, we are also extremely concerned about the high surf that's coming in for this storm. Um, we expect very high waves and a large amount of beach erosion. Um, our ocean rescue team has already posted double red flags, so we have closed the ocean for swimmers. Um, they have sighted a 300-yard rip current um, already this morning in the ocean, so uh, please don't plan to come to Tavi um, and get in the water. Uh, if you do plan to come to Tavi, save it for Friday and come to Pirates, to Pirates Fest. Uh, and uh, stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, Chatham Area Transit Authority is still monitoring uh, the wind patterns. Uh, that will be the determination as to whether or not public transportation will be provided on Thursday. It is my goal by 6 o'clock today to make that determination. Uh, once that determination is made, it will be shared publicly with SEMA on our website and through text alerts and social media. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Bonzo Reddick from the Coastal Health District. That is our district for the Georgia Department of Public Health, the eight counties along the coast. So I have five quick things to go over. So number one is our health departments. So the Chatham County Health Department, our posture right now is to plan to be open normal hours tomorrow and Friday. So that's both of our sites. Our our site on, on Eisenhower as well as our Midtown site on Drayton Street should both be open normal hours. S even for our surrounding counties as well, all the northernmost counties in our district also should have their health departments open as well. So that includes Effingham, Bryan, Liberty, all of our surrounding counties. The only counties in our district that, that will be closed tomorrow will be the two that are in the southernmost part that are bordering Florida. Florida. So all of our counties around this area should have normal health, health department operations tomorrow and Friday unless there's some unexpected turn of events. Second, we just always remind people to prepare yourselves in terms of all your health needs for the next couple of days in case there are any power, power outage, outages. So that includes if you have prescription medications you take, if they're going to run out before next week, go ahead and get those refilled. Pharmacists and physicians will usually work with you to get you a few days supply to make sure it lasts you through the weekend. Along the same lines, hopefully there won't be any flooding, but if there is flooding, especially for our, our areas along the coast and our islands, please be sure you do not venture out into the flood waters. We talked about this with our previous storm, but flood waters are often very nasty. They may have waste in them from animals or humans. They may uh, have backed up septic systems that get in the water. They also might have sharp objects or things that can, that can injure you. So 
Stay out of the flood waters literally unless it's a matter of life and death and you have no other option. If you do have to venture out and you suffer any puncture wounds or anything like that, be sure to get up to date on, up to date on your tetanus shot. We, tetanus shots are available in any of our health department locations and they should be given within 48 hours of any injuries. We've been, I had a tetanus case in Chatham County, I think in, since 2011 is what I've heard, so no tetanus from anybody. Um, and finally, if, again, if there's power outages, be, be careful with food because of the risk of foodborne illnesses. Um, if you do lose power, food is good in a refrigerator for up to four hours, as long as it's tightly sealed and cold, and good for a freezer anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. So in other words, if you lose power, if your freezer is half full, food's good for about 24 hours. If the freezer is full, it's actually good for up to 48 hours. So the main thing is keeping your food cold, and if it drops below a certain temperature, you have to get rid of it, unfortunately. And then last but not least, again, hopefully there won't be any power outages with this storm, but if there are, be very, very careful with generators. Generators can be, you know, almost life-saving, but if you run a generator indoors, there's a high risk of getting carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide poisoning, doesn't have any symptoms early, it has symptoms when it's often too late. So things like getting headaches or feeling dizzy, you might feel those symptoms, but when that happens, sometimes there's actually permanent damage that's already happened. So the most important thing is preventing it from happening in the first place. If you have to run a generator, make sure it's run outdoors, not inside, and also not inside your garage as well. It should really be 20 feet from your door. So if you have to run a generator, make sure it's outside, make sure the exhaust is facing away from your house. So away from your house, 20 feet, outside of the garage as well. So those are kind of the things to think about. And again, just you know, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And thank you for everybody who's here, but also all of you out in the community who are doing so much you can to keep us safe and to maintain the best health possible for the Coastal Health District. Thank you. Let me say um, this will be the only press conference that we will have. All right, based upon what is going on, but we will make the necessary uh, adjustments as we continue to get information from the National Weather Service Station and uh, from Charleston, and, and they were gracious enough to be with us on the command policy uh, call on yesterday as well as today. And so we make those those determinations from that. The Coast Guard uh, is there, G, uh, GDOT is there, uh, and as Director Jones says, uh, when it comes to the bridges, all right, because you know we have high bridges coming out of um, on President Street coming out from the islands into the city as well as uh, Thunderbolt, as well as the Talmadge Bridge, the uh, officers uh, who are on duty will make those determinations. Uh, GDOT will make those determinations because they have a threshold that if the wind increases to a certain point, uh, th that may happen. Wind and some flooding is the major um, obstacle for us right now. Um, what we want to do, what we want to make sure that everybody understands is um, on Sunday and Monday, I rode in, through all the islands that we have, and there's not a ton of debris. There are tons of debris still on the road, still in people's yard. And when the wind picks up and it gets 25, 35, 40 miles an hour, some of that may start to fly. And so we want people to be um, safe and be protected. And so that's why we wanted to make sure that we alert, especially our islanders, uh, those who live on the islands, because uh, we were not able, uh, even though we have um, um, private organizations working with us to get rid of some of the debris, uh, we were not able to get all of it off before the coming of this storm. And so. This being a, a major windmaker for us and probably rain, and there are some trees now because there are yards and, and there are places that are saturated, and, and it doesn't take much for that tree to fall. So we do expect some power outage, but not major power outage, okay? Um, Georgia Power has stationed because they're still working now. That's probably why they're not here. They're still working down to uh, firm up some of the damage that came from... Um, from uh, Helena, okay, and, and uh, as uh, they explained it to us in the command policy, some things they had to replace, some things they had to rebuild transformer-wise, and so that took time and that took extra resources. Um, I happened to see uh, a group of trucks from Tennessee, and then the next thing I saw was a group of trucks from Alabama, 
And I understand that, that we even have a group of linemen here from Canada who are helping us trying to get uh, our power up and running. So if you experience um, power outage, all right, uh, please now that you have power, please uh, uh, put your power to your cell phone so you boost it all the way up to 100%. Because we don't know exactly when, but we do know that we probably will suffer some uh, power outages and, and things here, all right? And take this building we're in now. When uh, Helena hit, there are some things that had to be done with the transformer before we could get power back in this building. So, again, uh, we, it, this is designed to alert you as to what we expect, and we base it upon the information that we get from uh, our partners um, from the state. The governor will be here later on this um, this afternoon, all right, and he will make some statements because he will be at the EOC Center, and uh, he and Director Jones and those will do some things that he wants to do, uh, but he will be here this afternoon. Any questions that anyone have, we can answer? Yes, yeah, sir. Just, just for the people who did just get power back and all that, if they lose it, how can they feel confident that we want to help those down in Florida if they need it, but they're going to be able to rely that they'll be able to get their power back and all that. Just yes, that's uh, and, and in fact that's why, um, according to what Judge Powell told us, that's why they brought um, some partners from northern part of the country in here and from areas that weren't affected. Um, they're here, and and uh, they have a staging area, all right, outside of the cone of risk uh, for Florida. And so they'll be moving back into Florida to get power and things back as soon as they get. Uh, and, and see, the thing is, is this storm is designed to, or it's, I, I shouldn't say designed, uh, it's set up so that it comes across Florida and then goes out into the Atlantic, okay? And we wanted to keep making that right turn as, and when it hits the Atlantic and don't make a left turn, all right? So that's what we're working. So they have um, area stage. And by the governor putting um, in Florida and in Georgia, putting a state of emergency. So if we need to, we can have the governor call out the National Guard to, for, for assistance, all right, because they're engineers in that area too, all right? Sure, um, go. Just anecdotally, trying to find a parking spot for this presser was quite <laughs> difficult. I mean, there are a lot of people who've come into the area. What are we doing to help them in the area as well as the people who are from Chatham County? Well, Mayor Johnson alluded to it. We have a whole lot of visitors here. Uh, in fact, I have a friend, um, I was talking to him on, on yesterday morning. He's down in Fort Myers, and his first thought yesterday was to ride it out. But he's here now in Chatham County, because I told him, there's not no time to be riding nothing out. It's time to get out the way, all right? Uh, houses and, and, and property could be replaced, but lives can't be replaced. So we do have. Uh, influx of, um, of visitors here, all right, with Florida tags. The security even told me um, when I came in that they had to remind them, have to read the sign, it's not for you, it's for the, for the chairman to park. So, yeah, parking is going to be a problem. Um, but we enjoy those visitors coming, all right? We, it gives us the time to help them in their time of need. Uh, I'm sorry, just a follow-up to your presser from last week. There's been a lot of stuff online, people applying for FEMA services, getting denied, all that. I remember you talking about setting up a, a location where people could go to get help right. with that sort of thing. Uh, do you have a time frame and a location of that? No, Mia Johnson and I uh, were, on, um, were on the White House, White House briefing about FEMA on yesterday, all right? Um, they, have not given us, they have not given us the time nor the, nor the designation, but the FEMA team will be here. And, and we have to remember now, they're working from just outside of Virginia, North Carolina, this way, okay? And so they are dispatching the FEMA team that's going to help folks. But if, uh, if you could go on to the 1-800 number, and I'll have uh, Director Jones give you that number again, all right, for FEMA, or either go to the FEMA website. You can start your application process, all right, so that when the team gets here, and my understanding of what the team's going to do when they get here is they're going to look at applications and go door to door, all right? And so um, it behooves everyone, and I'll say, as my father used to say uh, when I was coming up, if your name is not in the head, it can't be pulled out. So I advise everybody to fill out that application, whether you do it online 
or whether you do it over the phone, all right? And if you call the phone line now, you got to know you're gonna have a waiting period because it's crowded, okay? Um, because it's just not Chatham County, it's just not Georgia, but it's South Carolina and, and North Carolina and Florida as well, uh, who's on those FEMA lines. But uh, I was glad that they assured us yesterday as we talked to uh, the White House that uh, FEMA funds are not running out, okay? Those funds have been allocated. Um, they're talking about future funds, and, and my understanding is is that they are debating now whether to call Congress back into session or not into session to to even boost the FEMA even um, better, because um, I don't know that this is the last storm of the season, right? So they don't know just what, but we do know there is a need. So FEMA is working with that. Anything anybody want to say, Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? I yes. Yeah, uh, very good question. Thank you for asking that. So, uh, you know, our ground is already saturated uh, from the previous storms. Uh, it, it really hasn't abated yet. Um, there are some dry areas throughout the community, but the ground overall is still very heavily saturated. So uh, you asked about indicators around uh, properties. You know, if you're walking around a tree base and it's squishy, um, you know, uh, or it's soft uh, when it's normally a little more compact, then that's an indicator that it's, uh, it's certainly uh, oversaturated. So, um, you know, in Chatham County, throughout Chatham County, we have a very large tree canopy. Um, that's one of the things that draws people to Savannah and to Chatham County is that tree canopy, the beautiful oaks. Um, however, during a high wind event, those beautiful oaks tend to have old debris, old limbs, um, uh, you know, that have rotted over a period of time and it gets blown out by high winds. Uh, thankfully, a lot of, uh, of those uh, that debris was handled during Helene, um, but it's certainly possible that there's still some, some debris that is still left up in those live oaks, um, top of pine trees that are just old that didn't come down during Helene, but they may come down during this wind event. So it's always a very strong possibility that we could have additional debris uh, that we didn't see during Helene. So, um, you know, we got to keep vigilant of, uh, of monitoring the wind conditions and also just making sure that we're staying safe. Uh, we're being weather aware and also making sure that you are aware of the conditions around you. So we encourage everybody to, uh, to certainly be very, very diligent in, uh, in making sure they are aware of their surroundings. And just a quick follow-up, if someone does notice that the ground is you know, squishy, as you mentioned, towards the base of that tree, what's your recommendation for you know, what they should, should be doing with that? Tree? Well, we certainly don't want people digging up their trees. Um, trees is what makes our community beautiful. Um, so uh, just be aware, aware that that could potentially cause a hazard if uh, a wind or a very strong wind gust comes along. Um, just be weather aware. Uh, be aware of uh, what the conditions are around your property. Know your property and uh, just be mindful that some of that could become a hazardous condition if the, uh, if the wind hits it at the right location. Okay. The majority of what I understand about this storm is going to come in the, in the wee wee early hours of the morning, okay, while most of us are asleep. So that's why I hope that everyone will get prepared, all right, as we move through Wednesday into Thursday, okay, and, and uh, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, you're not, you're not sitting up watching a tree, all right? I know I'm not. And, and, uh, but if you make sure that the things around you, your trash cans, anything that can be uh, pushed by the wind, all right, and, 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 and those things can easily become projectiles, all right? I was talking to my daughter, and uh, they found their trash can not only down the street but around the corner, all right? So those things get pushed around real, real, um, real easily. And so we want you to secure things and then be careful is, is the best message that we want to say. But I also want to thank all our municipalities and all our partners who, have, who um, are part of the command policy group as we come together to formulate what we're going to do, all right, and how are we going to, and what's best.
for all of Chatham County to do. Um, the thing that catches us off balance is the things that we don't know, okay? When we don't know that there is um, certain powers out certain ways, okay? And, and um, it, it catches us off balance because, <clears throat> excuse me, then what we have to do is go through the process of getting it through the EOC and then getting them to get the right um, um, people in, in place. And so if you look around and you see something, please let your, your municipality know whether you're talking about the city of Savannah Garden, city of Portland, or Pool of Bloomingdale, Tybee, whatever, okay, and let the county know. And the best way to get it is if you get it to the EOC, they can direct it to the people who need to be in place to do that. Um, let us be prepared right, as much as we can be prepared. And I'm like the, the, um, Director Jones, as I rode through Sunday and Monday, I don't know that we can secure all of the debris that's on the side of the roads. You know, when I rode down Crom Railroad and, and Wilmington Island Road and I went out to Burnside Island, and, and I went out to Tybee and, and see all of the all of the debris that's on the side. I don't know if we can secure all that. I know we couldn't pick it all up, all right, because there just wasn't enough time and we just didn't have enough um, workers to do that. So I want folks to be mindful and be vigilant, all right, but most of all, be safe, all right? Thank you all again for coming now. And anything after this, direct it to uh, Director Jones and the EOC, all right? And that's how you get the news briefing, okay? Thank you all.